Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I'm Daljit Daliwal. Our first story is from the Middle East. A parent's worst nightmare, a critically sick baby and no medical help. But in Palestine and Israel, a heartwarming venture is not only saving children's lives, but also crossing borders and uniting enemies. It's 7.30 on a Sunday morning and four-month-old Mohayi is being dressed for the most important trip of his young life. Hey, Mohayi. He's an active, delightful baby, doted on by his parents Abu Arab and Emma Arab Kawazbi. But little Mohayi has two serious challenges to contend with. He was born with a heart defect that limits the oxygen in his blood. <laughs> and his family lives in the occupied West Bank in Palestine, where poverty and decades of conflict with Israel have impacted all facets of life, including health care. Hospitals there lack the equipment and trained specialists to treat a patient like Mohayi. <laughs> but Mohayi needs open heart surgery to keep him alive and healthy, and the nearest place to get it is across the border in Israel, which denies access to many Palestinians. The ongoing conflict between the two groups over land and security blew up again in summer 2014. Palestinian militants fired rockets at major Israeli cities and Israeli forces retaliated with bombs and a ground invasion of the Gaza Strip, about 40 kilometers from the West Bank. On this Sunday morning, the Kawazbis are on their way to take part in a rare example of Israeli-Palestinian cooperation. Their Palestinian pediatrician connected them to an Israeli program that performs heart surgeries on Palestinian babies. The program, called Save a Child's Heart, is based just outside Tel Aviv at the renowned Wolfson Hospital. The group helped arrange permission for the family to enter Israel. Still at a security station outside the hospital entrance, Abu Arab is asked to get out of the car. After about 10 minutes, the family is allowed to proceed. Abu Arab greets the receptionist in Hebrew. <laughs> Mohayi will spend the next eight days here being examined and operated on by some of the world's top pediatric heart specialists. <laughs> While the child patients come from around the world, about half of them, more than a hundred a year, are from the West Bank and Gaza. The Palestinian Authority, along with charitable contributions, helps pay for these surgeries. And people often considered enemies put conflict aside to focus on something bigger. We believe that we should do the best we can uh, to help other people in need, especially children. Israeli Dr. Leo Sasson is the clinical director and chief surgeon for Save a Child's Heart. No words or money can uh, describe the satisfaction of uh, that's, uh, making a difference. And sometimes it's uh, a difference between nations and people. On this anxious day, the Kawazbis are optimistic about their son's Israeli doctors. <laughs> But they acknowledge they'd rather have Mohayi's surgery back home. In accented Arabic, Dr. Sagi Asa does his best to explain Mohayi's condition, drawing a sketch to clarify. <laughs> Like most of Save a Child's Heart staff, Dr. Asa is Israeli, 
but the group has also started employing Palestinian doctors, nurses and support staff. <laughs> Fatima Sasor started here seven years ago as a volunteer Arabic Hebrew translator. Her job quickly expanded. It's not just to translate words, it's to translate emotion. Now a paid professional with a psychology degree, Fatima is skilled at dealing with anxious parents. Some of them come with the fears. I think when they come, they just don't know what to expect because they don't, they don't know me. They never saw um, a Jewish, uh, Israeli person. Nala Pace, a pediatrician, takes Mohayi's blood for testing. He's completely in, in our hands. It's a very delicate situation, very challenging. The week of Mohayi's visit, there are two other Palestinian infants in the heart ward, both from Gaza. For each of their families, the baby's illness added a new fear to an already harrowing year. According to United Nations statistics, 2,200 Palestinians were killed in the war in 2014. More than 500 of them children. More than 70 Israelis were killed. And more than half a million Palestinians lost their homes. This is a very challenging environment, but one which we're, you know, doing our very best to, to provide for the best health cover. Richard Wright is director of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, which, among other services, runs health clinics for Palestinian refugees. I think the conflict affects people's physical health and mental health, and um, it induces poverty, which is bad for health. Lives have been displaced, buildings have been uh, uh, removed. The human cost of this was really devastating. Mohayi's family joins in a weekly support group convened by Fatima. <laughs> Just knowing they're being heard in the support group is a comfort. Fatima explains that the next day is the start of Hanukkah, the Jewish festival of light. One thing not discussed in the group, the ever-present tension between Israelis and Palestinians, referred to by both sides with the euphemism, the situation. You will not see families here talking about the situation in, like, in public. It's a sensitive issue. Politics it doesn't enter the, inside the walls of the hospital. Here, the drama is much more personal. It's 6.30 on the morning of the surgery. The family has been at Wolfson Hospital for two full days now. As in all Israeli hospitals, the operating room is below ground level so that surgeries won't be interrupted during periods of rocket fire from across the border. In times of crisis, many people may ask, uh, why are you doing it? Why are you helping our enemy? But I think most of the people are brought up on the notion that we should help uh, other people. Mohayi's parents hand him to the Israeli nurse who will bring him to surgery. Normally, parents aren't allowed in the operating room, but Abu Arab insists on staying with his son until the last possible moment. Dr. Sasson and Dr. McConan, a surgeon from Ethiopia training at Wolfson, begin the task of stopping Mohayi's tiny heart from beating, putting him on a heart-lung machine so that they can operate. 
The surgeons have two tasks, patching a hole in Mohayi's heart and correcting an obstruction by creating a new valve which will allow blood to flow more freely between the heart's chambers. It's a delicate, painstaking process. The surgery takes five hours. Mohayi's parents wait anxiously in a hallway above the surgery. When the operation is complete, the medical team transports their patient back to the ground floor. Abu Arab, beyond eager to see his son, runs down the hallway after Mohayi's bed. I just want to kiss you. <laughs> the next day, Abu Arab and Imarab visit their boy in intensive care. They're relieved to see the tubes are removed and he's breathing on his own. The cardiologist shares the results of this morning's test. The repair is complete. Mohayi's heart is strong. He punctuates the good news with the Arabic phrase, Inshallah, God willing. Abu Arab thanks the team who've cared for his son in Hebrew, wishing them a happy Hanukkah. Good day. A small gesture of respect, maybe, but a meaningful reminder that critically ill babies aren't the only ones whose hearts are being mended at Wolfson Hospital. At the end of the day, you know that um, all of us, what we want is the best for our children. And we can uh, overcome all the gaps between everything once we cooperate and uh, work together.